Netcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. Bandwidth for Know How is brought to you by Cashfly at C A C H E F L Y dot com. After today's project, you'll be able to unleash your router. Watch us to know how to update your router's firmware. Wow, that's us. That's us, yeah. Hi, yeah, Zach, Tar, Leo, Laporte. Know How, the show where we actually show you, we get our hands dirty, mm -hmm. how to do stuff. What are we doing today, I ask? Today, we are going to put on some new firmware on this Cisco router. We have a couple of them because Cisco did something kind of silly. It was in the news recently, Leo. I think you got a little upset yeah, about could, this. I was really upset about it, and you've probably seen some news about it. It happened at the end of uh, June and through July. So if you had a high-end Cisco Linksys router, an EA 2700, 3500, 4500, by default, those routers come with auto update turned on. That means Cisco can push an update to your router without your permission. So most people, uh, end of June, early July, got pushed a new firmware that turned on a service that Cisco calls Cisco Cloud Connect. And what it meant was, instead of managing your router as you normally do through the browser, you had to sign up for an account on Cloud Connect and use Cloud Connect to manage your router settings. And there were some really weird terms of services in there. For instance, uh, Cisco said, well, we have the right to inspect your internet history. Mm -hmm. You may not use your router for pornography. And what Cisco was really doing with their Cloud Connect software was they wanted to make sure that if anybody was doing anything using their routers, they were protected legally. People You're a were, lawyer. You understand. These I are totally kinda, get this it. This is kind of boilerplate junk. That, but it freaked people out because right. they're like, I didn't opt into this, even though they might have actually opted into it because they clicked a little button, didn't read anything. But the main point is, you know what? We don't want this kind of stuff happening to our routers. And while I might have the know-how, we know some, we have somebody here who knows why all of this stuff works and how it works. Before you go on, I just want to say, Cisco said, oops, oh, yes. it was a mistake, and they backtracked out of it. My point is, you should control your router firmware, nobody else, and so we're going to show you how to do that That's yourself. exactly right. Let's bring in Russell Tammany. Russell Tammany is here. Hey, Russell, good to see you. Hey, how's it going? Russell is uh, <laughs> really the king of IT around here. He's a consulting IT professional. His company is Exponentia.net, um, and, and really smart about this stuff. And we were actually saying, hey, do we have any routers lying around that we could... Uh, <laughs> we could burn new firmware onto. And Russell, yeah. you said, oh yeah, there's like 100 in the basement. Absolutely, yeah. How we, come? Is that what you do? Well, yeah, we uh, you know we brought these to NAB and CES, so this is kind of our extra loaner routers and just other routers that were around here. And why don't you like the stock firmware on routers? Well, you know, the stock firmware can be good, but it's limited, so you know, you don't have certain features of it. Uh, you know, the manufacturers kind of decide a price point based on, you know, what router you buy, and, right. you know, a lot of them have the same chips in them, but they'll limit them, so, so in other this words, sort of lets you unlock it. Th this is cheaper because it has crappier firmware. Exactly. <laughs> now, if, if somebody doesn't know what firmware is, Russell, could you explain what that is? Because yeah. it's just, I mean, it's a mini computer, right? The exactly. Whole so, I mean, the firmware is basically the software that runs on the router. There's it, a processor it, on it, here. There's, there's a processor. Memory. It's actually very similar to, like, what, what a smartphone would have. Right. Uh, they're usually ARM-based as well, so uh, the software and firmware get loaded on the router and tell it what it has, what it can do, as well as drivers for the actual radio firmware. So when I'm controlling the router from my browser using, you mm -hmm. know, 192.168.1.1 or whatever the local address is, I'm actually logging into the operating Correct. system and, and changing it, settings. It essentially has a web server, right. and you're going to that web server and changing the settings. And there are a lot of different firmware options out there with this OpenWRT, right. DDWRT, Tomato, and uh, what we have here, we have, an, well, you, you need to know this as well. You need to know what model you have because right. not every firmware is going to work on every router. Let me ask you, where does this firmware come from? Who is OpenWRT, DDWRT? Who are these people? Yeah, they're just sort of groups of open source enthusiasts that get together and work on these products. And they release. So it's not from Cisco. It's, it's not, not from no, manufacturers. No, it's, it's not approved. Um, it may it's not actually, approved. It may actually void your warranty. Okay. Um, so, you know, that's one thing to be aware of if well, you just bought it. Last week we were jailbreaking our iPhones right. by putting new firmware on it. It's very similar to that. Exactly. It? It's okay. just that the manufacturer doesn't want people doing it and then right. messing it up and sending it back to them. Hey, I bricked my router. It's your exactly. fault. I want a new router. Yeah, I highly suggest that if you're going to do this project, uh, make sure you're using a spare router. Don't be doing this with your main one. <laughs> yes. Because 
because bricking routers is pretty simple to do. If you have one power surge or outage at the same time while you're upgrading this, you will brick it. And the, the way to, do, to fix it is hardware-based, taking apart the actual router, yes. trying to find some leads on, on the motherboard yeah, they're called, and hope. Yeah, they're called JTAG leads, or sometimes there's a way to use uh, serial ports to uh, flash them. But if you don't want to take apart your router and, you know, <laughs> basically attach leads to it, you know, you, you really, you know, I, I will brick these and just throw them out. Because, so these are EEPROMs, you know, electrically, electrically, electrically erasable, programmable read only well, memory, is that what's in there? Uh, no, it's flash memory. Oh, it's flash. Um, it's regular flash memory. There's oh, an, interesting. There's an NVRAM chip, which is where the config gets stored, mm -hmm. um, and that's sort of more like an EEPROM, but um, the memory in there is just regular flash, but well, that's not a big deal. So when you short you know, it, you're basically clearing the RAM. Right, but there's no way to, there's no bootloader in these, right? right? So you know, enterprise routers, Cisco routers, things like that have a special boot ROM. Right. You can boot up and then recover the router. Right. Can't do that. You can't do that. For our model, these. we have the Linksys E E3200, and now what I'm going to do is figure out what firmware to get. And the thing is, that's important. You got to have the right firmware for yes. the model you're going to be doing. And each of these sites, where there's ddw dd-wrt.com, you can do a quick search. We show my screen. You can find the router, and you'll find information as to what firmware you can get for what device. In our case, there is an open WRT version available, but it's alpha. I don't know if I want to put that on here. The DDWRT version is very stable, so I'm going to go ahead with that. You know what's interesting about the name DDWRT it comes from a Linksys model, the WRT54GL, which everybody Correct. loved. It was the easiest one to write firmware well, for. Yeah, they uh, the the WRT series, like the 54G and the mm -hmm. uh, WRT11s, were kind of the initial ones that all of right. these firmwares were written for. But now they work on. A, is it is it a, like a huge range of routers? I mean, oh, yes. is there a good chance that my router will be on this list? There are hundreds of supported devices when it comes to DDWRT, and that's why there's a wiki. Uh, that's where all the instructions are. We can't show you every single router that you can do this to. That's why we're picking this one model. And the thing is, this is a Linksys, and Cisco kind of makes them. They kind of messed up a certain things. Those newest routers that had that Cloud Connect software, the auto-update one, I don't believe there's firmware for that just yet. Because they're brand new. Right. So Just like any open source right. project, it, wait, it takes a while for the open source community to get around, and they have to all have copies, and yeah. eventually they'll Now, if you go to DD- does Linksys, active, just, does Linksys actively discourage this, or do they try to prevent it? Uh, I don't think they try to prevent it. If they really wanted to try to prevent they it, they would, they would lock it, similar mm -hmm. to what they do with the Android bootloaders. Mm -hmm. So, you know, they're not implementing that yet. Um, but you Forget know, that I said anything yeah, bad. Yeah, we don't want to give them any you. ideas. We, we like buying cheap routers and <laughs> well, that, making them nice. They also want you to be able to upgrade to the latest firmware that Linksys gives you if you want to right. download that and manually install it. So we go to the wiki page for DDWRT, find our model, and we have the Linksys E3200 again. That's this one here. And you'll see, that's you can actually see the image of it. You go, yeah, that's my router. This is like a, what, $30, $40 router? It's not very expensive. It's not very expensive. Okay. It was a dual band router, and I believe it was about $75. $75, okay. Um, but now it's the old model. So and this, this is, is Wi-Fi. This is not just a uh, static router. This is a Wi-Fi It's Wi-Fi and Ethernet But router. you could do this on any router. It doesn't have to be a Wi-Fi router. Okay. Now you'll see the flashing um, instructions on the website, and it's in big, bold letters, and it says, don't break your router. This is usually when people freak out. They go, I don't want a brick. I want a router. Don't worry. Just slowly read everything. Things are fine. It's a 10-step process. And I got to say, I've done this before. It actually is way easier than I remembered from you years ago. Me, you told me you, it was hard to brick it. You couldn't. You tried to brick. Something. I tried to brick some other stuff back here. I've done <laughs> this could, a couple of times. You couldn't brick them. I tried to br brick this one. This but, is a. But you had to go to extremes. You had to yeah. take the wrong ROM, mm -hmm. and even then you couldn't brick it. it. Yeah, unless you have a power surge or something. So I don't want to scare people. I know you're you're, very, you're a lawyer <laughs> and you're protecting us. You want to tell yeah. people you could brick your router. But it isn't that scary, that hard to do. Have you ever no. bricked a router in the process? I have bricked a router in the process, oh. but you know that's maybe one in a hundred. Right. So you and know, usually and it's because the power failed. It's, no, it's usually because you didn't read the instructions yes, properly. Yes, definitely right. read. You know, it, it's it's because I downloaded the wrong thing and tried it Got and it. just made an assumption. Got it. It's the same. You know, you know it's the same as updating your BIOS on a motherboard. Right. Uh, Jailbreaking life. It's the same exact. You want to thing. double check those model numbers. Yeah. You want to, you know, make sure that your download completed. And and none uh, of these guys are the DDWRT stuff isn't checking for you. That's why you have to read the instructions. Right. So, it's not going to necessarily say, oh, don't install it now. Right. Well, that's what the wiki's for. So you right. know, they put that stuff on the wiki, and you know, you really want to find out if I flash this, what am I going to lose? So read it twice. You know, yes, it's read for, it before starting it. So for, we're, uh, for example, this E3200 you actually lose the 5 gigahertz radio 
with ah. the first version of the DDWRT firmware. So that reminds okay. me a little bit of Android ROMs, where right. sometimes it in may the not early have, versions of the ROM, it may not support it may all not the have features Bluetooth of the Bluetooth or the, right. or the second okay. radio. So. While you guys are talking about all the theoretical stuff, I'm actually going to do something to this right. router. Will you do it? There. Let's so do it. We got our instructions. They're written out. They're, they're right they're, here they're, on this page. Ten steps. Ten yep. steps. Should I, actually, should I read the steps to you to make sure you're following them you correctly? You could do that. <laughs> read the Peacock announcement carefully. Now that's Did the, you do that? I did read that. It's a terrifying document. You first see it. Oh yes, it's like it's many many pages of information you need to know. It'll explain everything. Disconnect Second. all cables yep. and wireless clients. So this is not so make sure it. if it's a Wi-Fi router, nobody's logged in. Mm -hmm. The one oh. cable you don't disconnect is power. Right, obviously. you're gonna need that. Oh, and, ho and hold on, first just. Before you do this, the expert tip. What you're going to want to do is log into your router, how you have it set up, and write everything down. Save your configuration. Save your configuration. Now, the configuration file is not restorable, so if so you're going to blank you're gonna, it. You're going to blank mm -hmm. it. So you're going to want to make sure you get the SSID, your password, your settings. See, this is everything where that's you actually get in the, the guy who's done a hundred of them. Because the first 20, he yeah. forgot to do that. <laughs> yeah, and then you're, you're trying to figure out what yeah. it was. So write down so. your, log in, write down your configuration. Now disconnect all cables. This is the, uh, now you're doing a, what is this, a 30, 30, 30 reset. This is like a little bit of voodoo of resetting this. It's a hard, this is a, not, it's a different from hard reset. And you're it's right. different on every router, by Right, the way. correct. Every manufacturer has a different So reset. I'm going to show you, this, on, on this uh, router, there's a little reset port. I have a piece of a binder clip. You hold this down for 30 seconds, which I have to count to myself. And then after that, you're going to disconnect the power and, and hold this down for another 30 seconds. Then reconnect the power for another 30 seconds. And that's going to allow you to do some serious work to this. Now, why do we want to reset the router? Is it necessary to it's, do that? It's uh, the same reason why you need to save your configuration. Because uh, the configuration that's in the NVRAM is written for your stock firmware. So it's for the Linksys or for the Netgear or for the Buffalo. And when you replace that firmware with the DDWRT firmware, it's going to boot and try to look in the NVRAM for your configuration. So you so, are resetting a part of the router that isn't overwritten correct. when you write the new firmware. Correct. You have to make sure that's back to its stock state. It's the safest to do that. I. That's one of the ways that I have bricked a router okay. before, is by not resetting it first. So the NVRAM so, is kind of non-volatile. It's preserved correct. across this. All right. Now, so we're clearing and, that And now. this 303030 okay. reset can also be helpful if you forgot to clear it, put the DDWRT on it, and then got stuck. So You might you, go back you, and do that. So if you didn't do it and you think it's bricked, it's got always it. good to try that. Okay. Have, we've waited. This took 90 seconds. This is going to take 90 seconds right. total. I've got another like, 10 right. seconds to go. Nine, is everybody eight. Counting Are you for timing you? this? I Seven, am. six, five... <laughs> Four, three, two. Okay, everybody praying to God, praying to God. Okay, do good. Do not be in a hurry when you do this, no. by the way. This is, this is, it's, it's being methodical, careful, following the steps that keep you from bricking it. Follow think. directions. And if you think you know better than the instructions, you probably don't. If you do know better, edit them and then change them. Then you're Russell them. Tammany. That's one of the big <laughs> things. Then you brick it. Years ago, years ago, the documentation wasn't as good as this. Right. I think years ago, it was kind of disparate. It was on forums. You'd have to look on a forum through this and 50 a, posts. This is a lot better than, ever, than I yeah, ever It's gotten a lot cleaner, yeah. a lot easier. Right yeah. now, I have to reconnect a LAN cable to the router. So you're going to connect a cable to your laptop mm -hmm. and to your router. That LAN cable is how you're going to get the firmware onto the router. Right. Okay. So I'm going to go to 192.168.11. You don't do this wirelessly. You got no, to you you do it hardwired. And if you see my screen right now, you can say, welcome to the Linksys E3200. Now, I don't want to install Cisco Connect because that's exactly what we don't want. This is what we're trying Continue to Continue with an right. open and unsecured network. I'm going to say, I understand my network is open. I'm going to click hit continue. Boy, they really do want you to yeah. put the Cloud again, Connect on there, they do. don't they? It says, hey, listen, you guys are not using <laughs> Cisco Connect. So, yes. yeah, okay, here we go. Now we're finally into the interface. So this is what you're used to. This is the traditional Cisco interface for setting up the router. Okay. But here, we're going to go to that update your firmware page. Right, that's in the administration tab. And then we've already downloaded. The next step says log into the web interface and flash firmware E3200 trailed initial Flash build. This is a piece of firmware that's going to allow you to put DDWRT on the router. Okay, slow down. So this is not the firmware. This this is the firmware, but it is a special build of the firmware that's intended for flashing using Linksys's web interface. Okay, and that's not what we want, or it is what we it, want. It will include a version of DDWRT that we I want, see. but okay. it may so, be an older version. So you downloaded this mm -hmm. from the DDWRT that's site. That's correct. Yes. And what you're telling is the router is. Hey, wink, wink, nudge, nudge. We're going to update your firmware right. with something it thinks is a Linksys product. 
but isn't. Yeah, right, so, so the, the, the newer versions of DDWRT may not directly flash to the router. All right, so it. now I have lots of softwares. So I've got to make sure I put the so right things on there. that may have to be installed first. And it, then it includes a version of DDWRT. It's in there. Okay. But so to this, do newer versions, you'll need to download So I've gone through the web interface. I went to upgrade, so admin, to fa a firmware upgrade, and then hit choose file. So you're finding the file. Found the file. There it is. Make sure it's clearly labeled. Don't mix these you things might, up. This might be a good time to check the name of that file yes. with the name of the file and you expect you to be installing. You also open. want to double check that you know it's not a zip file, and that it is <laughs> been extracted and is a .bin file. We have done that. We have yeah. installed zip files into mm -hmm. firmware. It's, it it's not uncommon. So right now, it's, it's upgrading right now. So it says upgrade must not be interrupted. So again, you're going to have the urge to disconnect things, kick over power supplies, move with your swivel chair. Don't do that right now as much as you want to. We should point out this is operating system independent at this point because mm -hmm. you're not using the Windows or Mac or Linux machine. You're actually right. running a browser that, that is yeah, using so unlike the software. Android right. where you know, you, the instructions easy. are different. It's right. the same. This is very basically. easy across all platforms. Now, right, the system reboot is in progress. And Take Let's see his screen. Seconds. We want to watch what's going on here. Okay. Going to hit continue. So it, it copied. That was fast. It copied yeah. everything over. It's not very big. Now the file is only about four to eight megs, yeah. so okay. it's very small. Now the instructions say we have to wait ten minutes until WLAN turns on. And the weird thing is, in my experience, I have not seen it take ten minutes. It actually restarts in like like three. This is the boot time, though, right? It's actually. Right. It's or the, is it doing anything besides boot? Uh, it may be the initial flash. So once it's copied, it then reboots and then does a flash. So, so this, it this might be doing reboot, some stuff. You know, okay. may also be important. To That's not why it could it. take. It probably depends on the machine, but it, or the uh, router. But it could mm -hmm. take right. as long as ten minutes. Depending. It's just that thing to make sure. It, it's it's probably not going to take that. It's just to make sure that nobody unplugs theirs, <laughs> while it may still Wait be doing longer that. than it could possibly right. ever take in a exactly. million years. Because you have that one chance, and it's already set up. So we you, go to my you screen. You see it blinking? What? Oh, there you what? Go. I That's just it. I refresh one nine two one six eight one one, and right now. This is obviously a diff different interface. You can see on the top left, now, DD. Now, it, it does say that you should power cycle for 30 seconds. You should wait five minutes until it finishes booting. You should Correct. do a 30, you do 30 all that. reset. Yeah. We didn't do any of that. You should finish that. Well, because yeah, you should reset it again after DDWRT has gone in. Just to be Just safe. so that DDWRT can put its initial config in. Um, I usually skip that step, but to be safe. But Russell you know, knows everything. We're doing the know, Russell it's, method. It's, you know. <laughs> now, so don't do it at home. Don't try this at home, kids. Well, now, now that we have this software on there, the firmware. That's amazing. What are we going to do with it? Now we wait, already wait, asked. Wait, I just, just want to underscore this. We're done. We well, actually well, put new firmware on here. Now yep. we have to configure it. I yep. understand. We, we got stuff to do. But but the job is done. The thing that we came here to show you to do is done. That's how easy it is. That's really simple. Again, yes. though. You can break it if you make a mistake. Just but you stop it. saying that. You're scaring the people at Hey, home. that's what scared me. So I got to make sure that people know to be scared slightly, tiny bit. You know, fearful. So we skipped bad. a few steps. Follow all ten steps. Right. Now, and this is where we're really glad to have Russell here. Mm -hmm. It's time to configure this router. And Russell's going to tell us some of the things that he does to now, tweak routers. We asked the audience before, what are you, what are you guys going to do with Let's your new firmware? Yeah. Love to see your reaction. What, what were you guys going to do with it? So we have, an e we have a, tw a tweet from... Adam Tech, he goes, the first thing I do is increase the wireless broadcast power. You can do that? Now, yes, in the router, absolutely. So, not normally the thing you can do. Right, so normally you're going to get whatever the manufacturer decides is the transmit power for that router. And it's now, usually like a tenth of a watt, it's not uh, very much, It's usually watt. pretty low, it's usually somewhere between 50 and 100 milliwatts, yeah. uh, depending okay. on the router. Now, they have engineered it so that they've picked an appropriate power setting for the antenna that's actually in the product. So you could burn so it out. So they're not exactly you know, cheating you, it's just that they designed the product and they chose right. the power for certain right. reasons. Right. So you can turn up the power, but I would not suggest turning up the power more than 25%, 30% from the stock power. Here's another uh, suggestion from the, the Twitter room. I like this and Russell will not like this. Do you <laughs> have it there, Colin? Uh, set up the PPTP VPN server so I can access Spotify and box on my work wife. <laughs> now, right. DDWRT comes with a version of OpenVPN that allows Correct. you to use PPTP. Correct. What did all of that just mean? Uh, essentially, that gives you software that you can create a VPN tunnel. So you're linking your computer that you're on with your home network like it's actually plugged in. It's getting around so, the IT you know, restrictions. You're, yeah, if, there was, if at your, you know, well, it may not be the restrictions, but there's not many good ways of accessing services like right. that directly. So you can do a VPN, and then now the IT guys can't actually see exactly what you're doing. He's tunneling to his you know, home server. And right. You know, they, they know that you're making a VPN, and they know where you're making the VPN. <laughs> they don't know too, what's going on. But in they don't there. know what's going over it. <laughs> you can also make your router do a lot more. I think somebody else had a suggestion as to making it a wireless repeater. 
Right. So the, now that's interesting because you can buy, I could buy a Linksys repeater, right? Correct. And usually what you'll find is that they charge more for those. So uh, one of the things, the reason that I use these in a lot of kind of nonprofit and smaller businesses is because they can conf be configured to do a WDS bridge, which is actually more than just a repeater. What a WDS bridge allows you to do is connect a second unit. Um, it can be anything that runs DDWRT, and it can be a wireless repeater off of your main unit. So both units need to have DDWRT, and both ne units need to be configured for this WDS bridge. And then that lets you put another router in another room. That's great. And it works as both a wireless repeater and as the wired ports in the router get connected to that wireless network as well. So there's a lot so more you can do with this. It's to you know, extend your it network. It extends both your wireless and your wired network right. wirelessly. And it allows you to create mesh networks with multiple units. That is really cool. And because these are so cheap and plentiful, Correct. this is a really inexpensive way to extend yes, the wireless Yes, I, I have uh, some nonprofit sites where we have 10 of these covering wow. their entire campus. And we just, you know, some of them where we can have them wired in, we have them wired in. And where we can't wire them in, we'll put one off of a bridge. Uh, you know, and then that lets us That's repeat that idea. signal over a, a whole area. Dr. Dredd in our chat room says a good thing, a thing that all ham operators know. Yes, you could turn up your transmit power, mm -hmm. but don't be a jackass and turn it up higher than you need. Just right. turn it up enough if, so that it does what it yeah, has if to you, do. Yeah, if you do turn it up higher than you need, you're actually creating more noise. And then and your neighbors are not Your neighbors gonna like are not going to like that. The other thing is that, remember, when you turn up the transmit power, you're not turning up the sensitivity on receiving. So when you take your iPad or your laptop and you take it you know, further away than you could before with higher power, that device may not be able to talk back. Yeah, right. so basically you have the router spitting so, out tons of signal, exactly. but some of it's noisier than normal, and your, your device is like, yeah, I can see yeah, the router. I have three bars, but nothing's but working. But the router still doesn't have anything that says, I can right. grab this data back. So that was one of the things I was like, well, that seems right. a little strange. So you don't want to go too high. You know, some routers have a uh, replaceable Ethernet or uh, antenna jack, so you can you put go out a directional another. antenna or a right. larger antenna, and that will make, a larger antenna will make your receive better. Uh, and same with the directional. So this is def I mean, there's so many different things what you can do, do with that. What else do we do? This is so much oh, that's, fun. That's, we need a whole follow-up episode for what you can do with this. There's <laughs> Are we out so of time? Many, is so that when you, what you're saying? That's what I'm well, getting at. No, we're when not out of time. Yes. I say extend gotta, the show. I, I, well, no. <laughs> so I'm sorry. That's not going to happen. We're going to do so though. You got it set up. <laughs> I know you guys have lots of ideas, and I know we need. This is like a 101 so course. We, part two. We need a 201. Okay. We need to really get into this. Can we get you to come back and show? We have this. We could set up. We could take our Wi-Fi and just keep chaining them together. Yeah, from anywhere. So, uh, yeah, I'll I'm, tell you, I'm, before I'm we go, sweet, though, but I there are certain like to, things that anybody with a yeah. Wi-Fi router absolutely has to do. Right. Would you just give us those basic things? Right. So so we don't want anybody going out in the world. That's true. This is open yeah. right now, too. Right. So the basic thing is, yeah, when DDWRT flashes, too, it's going to leave you open. It'll have an SSID of DD-WRT, and you don't want to leave it in that configuration. So okay. if you got to this point, now you need to go back to what you wrote down from your previous router and go into the DDWRT and set up an equivalent configuration. Turn on the WPA2. So you want to turn on WPA2. Um, now, if you name it the same thing as your previous wireless, and you use the exact same mode, like WPA2, and security type, like AES or TKIP, you we, won't have to go. We recommend AES. We recommend way. AES and WPA2, yep. uh, personal. Uh, and then w, uh, DDWRT supports DDW, that, which is nice. It does. It also supports enterprise with radius service, which oh, is a whole right. other more advanced topic. Most people don't. Most have people those, won't so do that, on, so don't yeah. turn that on. Yeah. Um, and then if you configure the same settings as your previous router, you won't have to go to all right. of your other devices and fix it. That's nice. So you know, same SSID. Write it down first, same SSID. You should also change the administration case, password. Yeah, obviously, they're all case mm -hmm. sensitive. So make sure what when you're. The, uh, what is the default password on DDWRT? It's root and admin. Uh, yeah, root exactly. and admin. Yeah, so root everybody using. knows that. Right. So change, right. So change that <laughs> yes. immediately. It's actually <laughs> the first thing you get says change that. Turn yeah. off WAN administration unless you know that you need that. Right. Uh, it doesn't matter to turn off, change SSID or hide SSID. No, the hiding SSID and the MAC filtering doesn't are do anything. MAC address worthless. filtering does nothing. They just they just annoy certain yeah. people. Yeah. That's about it. In low level. So that's good. So now it's secured. If you have the if you had Correct. it secured before, it'll be secured exactly as it was before. Correct. Okay. Good. Yeah, but we definitely need to do a follow up. There's lots, and I know you guys are gonna have lots of ideas. Well, there's and lots emails. of tweaks in here. right? Oh yeah, there's so many things you do, and there's so many different routers and so many different firmware you yep. can try out. If you got an idea, you can just send us an email at knowhow at twit.tv. That's K. N O W H O W at twit.tv. We can leave us a voicemail, keep them short, and keep them intelligent. We love intelligent voicemails. <laughs> Haven't seen a lot of those. Have we gotten any yet? Colin? I'm no. seeing a head shake. <laughs> nope. They were just too long. They were very brilliant. Yes, they were long. They were smart, just long. We, yeah, you guys are brilliant. We 30 just, seconds or less. We so would we can't love play that. It. 
408-800. Do you see what a time... time uh, uh, Tom, there's a word for that. 408-800-K-N-O-W. <laughs> that's 408-800-K-N-O-W. You want to leave us a voicemail. Or if you did something on your own and you made a video, upload it to YouTube. That'd be send fun. us, send us a link. We'd love yeah. to see what you guys are doing with this, yeah. this information. Because By the way, one other thing I want to point out. Uh, we talk all the time on Security Now about WPS and how insecure it is. It actually right. will let somebody get into a WPA2 password, a strong password. Correct. The good news is there's no WPS on that's, any of these. That's correct. Uh, they haven't implemented that in for uh, good DDWRT. Reason. They may, somebody may be working on a secure it, they'll version. Do it right. But exactly. Yeah. So you can you can trust those guys to do it right. I if love they do it. That. That's really important. This is a, yet another reason why you want to put this on. Mm -hmm. here. In fact, I wouldn't even buy a router unless it's on the list. Yeah, that's something to do. Because right. I was testing out with other products earlier. I'm like, this D-Link is not going to work. So now I can't do anything with that. Right. And if you want to have that ability, look it up first. I mean, that wiki is great. And their database searches are way better than they used to be. It used to be yeah. almost impossible it's to find It's very easy stuff. to find it now. Can I ask one more question? Will this improve performance? Um, it's possible. It's possible that the radio firmware that's actually in the DDR DDWRT bundle uh, is a little better than what the manufacturer provides, it but won't it be also any worse. well, no, it, it could way. be worse. Oh, I mean, this is the issue. Oh, yeah. So, if you bought a brand new router and it's supported by DDWRT, I'd suggest letting it run for a week or two and just make sure that you know it's stable in your environment and that you don't have any issues with it, so that you're not you know flashing the, DDWRT. The, the original router, right? You want to make sure your original router because you is can't okay. return this one. Um, you this. actually can return some of them. Um, this unit, uh, you can return to the stock firmware. So, if you know ah. you don't like yeah, it, so you can, you put can it go back. How do you do that? Uh, Pretty much the same way. You've got to yeah, go to the right. links to site, find out what your firmware is. So there is a way to get yeah. the original firmware it's this, right. on, on most units, you can go back. Uh, yeah, most of them. No. I happen uh, to have one that you can't. <laughs> I have notes. This are is these the, uh, bricks? No, this is not a brick. This one just is a one way. You <laughs> okay. want to double check. Some of them have written in bold on the instructions. Once you go DDWRT on this one, you can't go back. I think Colleen put tomato on one of these. Yeah, guys. tomato was on yeah, this one on toothpicks on there. Yeah, so you uh, just you, that's why you want to read it carefully because if, if you're using the USB port feature to share a hard drive, that could be turned you, off. And you update and you lose that, you may not be able to we get it. We got to save this. Is the old toothpick These are bird classic we should save things this. from yeah. the cottage. And finally, is there a difference between DDWRT and tomato? Should we prefer one over the other? Um, I personally prefer DDWRT, but you know, if, there are fanboys the other way too. It, it, there's fanboys the other way too, exactly. Okay. And you know, and they're both up to date. They're some of them may have different router support. So okay. yeah. if you check DDWRT, don't assume that that's the only one that you can get on your router. Got it. Wow, this was good. I'm sorry we went over, but you know what? It was great stuff. Really <laughs> useful stuff. Oh, you, you, you owe it to me, Laporte. You know? I owe you five minutes. Five minutes. Five minutes you're never going to get back. I know. And I'm, I'm not much older. <laughs> this is, uh, thanks, thanks, Leo. And well, thanks to Russell Tammany from Exponentia.net. Sure you're not. the greatest. I'm telling you, he's the best IT guy I have ever seen. And I've seen a lot of them. And he is our contract guy and just makes oh, such yeah, so a difference. Before we go, here. next week. What's next week? Next week, you guys are going to know how to build a media server. We've Ooh. gotten so many emails about this. We're going to use we, Plex. How are we going to get our content around our house? We're going to use Plex. How are we going to have a front end? How am I going to watch my stuff around my house? You'll find out next week. You can't week. do that in half an hour. I'll try. <laughs> and I'll I will try. <laughs> Thanks, everybody, for joining us. Remember, this show is available for download on uh, all of uh, the usual sites, including iTunes, the Zune, and, of course, twit.tv slash... KH. KH. That's our abbreviation, KH. And we always put it on YouTube, and that's really important. If a friend calls you or somebody wants to know how to do something, please don't hesitate to refer them to our YouTube video. We really want to make a database there uh, mm -hmm. over time of just really well-done how-to videos that help people get what they need to be. <laughs> so there you go. That's how you create new firmware. Not that you know how. Do, do, it, do it now! It. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye. <laughs>